Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, you guys know me. My name is Bryce and you know Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga. She's been on the channel multiple, multiple times. Um, I've known Cindy for years now. I always like to say out of all the people I film with, I actually see Cindy in real life. <laughs> so, And then, of course, my dear friend, Mary, who's also been on this channel one other time. And Mary, I have to say, since you've been came on the channel, we've got such positive feedback from all of your um, healing ses sessions that you have done for subscribers. And of course, Cindy, you've been doing this for years. And I've been lucky and fortunate enough that I have been healed by both Mary and Cindy, and they're both the real deals. And I wanted to bring them both on uh, the show today so that we can kind of talk more about energy healing. And um, as we were saying before I hit record, one of the most fascinating and interesting things about this um, great awakening, shall we say, is that a lot of people are finding their spirituality, not like it ever really was missing, but they're actually activating it. And so sometimes that can be very, very overwhelming for people. And, and especially if it's new, especially when we're talking about the healing aspect of energy, because most of us are really used to going through the medical aspect of healing. And now we have this whole other perspective about the body being the minefield and so therefore it's working with energy and vibration and so I wanted to bring these two ladies on the show today back again so we can kind of have a conversation about that and of course I am I have taken a level one and level two Reiki course before many 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 years ago I normally don't even mention that because I took it just, I don't want to say for shits and giggles. I took it to try to understand it more, but that was never going to be my modality. I knew that walking into the course that I was never going to be practicing this. It was just more for me to get a better understanding of what it, what this energy healing actually is. And so um, I'm going to, so with that being said, I'm going to let you two ladies kind of direct the conversation. I know Cindy and Mary, we kind of spoke about starting off like, you know, where do you start? If you, uh, we'll start there. We'll start at the beginning. Where do, you, if you're someone that's just now awakening to the spirituality, where does one start in discovering this? You want me to go first? <laughs> sure. Go ahead, Mary. Oh, all right. So what I did is because I was a healer my whole life and I knew this, like I said before, I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know what, what it meant when I pick up a little bird injured and put it in my hands and heal it, you know? It was something that just came natural to me to use my hands for everything. I have a friend who is a Reiki teacher and a Reiki master, and she says, well, you're a healer. So if people in tune to this and they understand what I'm saying, they know that they're guarded, you know, in their intuition to st seek out a Reiki teacher and start taking the Reiki ones, Reiki two, and then Reiki three, because you got to be attuned to all of them you know, and go from there. And then from there, it just grows. That's what it's doing for me. I would definitely say if you start to get the feeling that there's something, something bigger for you within the realm of healing, you start to get the calling, you, you just get a calling. Sometimes you get, sometimes you don't get, sometimes you just get an interest. And kind of like how you said, Bryce, I'm I'm curious. I'm I'm curious about uh, Reiki. I'm going to take the take these courses. I'm going to find out what these attunements are about, and then from there you realize, oh wow. I mean, maybe not necessarily you, Bryce, but then you realize, wow, you know, I want to continue on with this. I want to continue to expand, and then there's where you just simply get like uh, a calling. For me, I think it started more out, more out as a curiosity, honestly, more than just a calling at the beginning. It was a curiosity about all of the different kinds of healing modalities. And the number one thing I would say is, uh, yeah, what Mary said is, is find you someone that you can work with. Find you a teacher that's going to, to guide you, whether you're going into the realm of Reiki, which... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that is with my energy healing, I actually started off, we had this conversation uh, last time, Bryce, with, uh, uh, um, I became a certified hypnotherapist before I became a yoga teacher or before I became um, a, a Reiki master. And, but it happened to be that the, the hypnotherapist that I worked with, he was basically just an energetic healer. 
And it was through his training that I learned all about like spirit release and entity attachment and all that stuff. So I started off so that way. Then I got like my yoga training, which is all about learning and understanding the, the body. And then um, soon after that, I got my Reiki uh, certifications. And then uh, from there, it went on to um, more understanding my roots. Um, so the kind of energy work that I do is a culmination of, you know, kind of Reiki. Um, some of the things that I learned through the hypnotherapy and then uh, it's also vastly shamanic yeah. because I, you know, I trained with, with some shamans and spent some time with them, them as well. And so it, it became a mixture of all these different things. But throughout the way, th uh, throughout the whole entire time, I had a teacher. You know, I, I mean, it's changed and it shifted. You know, I had the Reiki teacher. I had, you know, uh, when I was learning hypnotherapy, I had the, the shamanic teachers. I had, of course, my yoga teachers. So having a teachers definitely, absolutely get you one. Yeah, <laughs> crucial. And they will come. They will, they will show up. Yeah. They will show up. Yeah, mm -hmm. the right ones will will show up for you because uh, there is so much information out there these days. Kind of what you were talking about, Bryce, how everyone is feeling this awakening. And because of that and because of the access to to YouTube and to um, to uh, to the Internet, there is so, so, so much information that when you just try to search online or YouTube, it can be too much. Yeah. You don't know where to begin. You don't know how to hone your skill. And if you try to do it by yourself, it's just so much harder. Plus your teachers, and I know Bryce, you know, that's just through the Ashtanga, your teachers, they pass on. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost like there's a, there's an a initiation with your teachers where they, where they pass on, they transmit their, um, it's, it's almost like a physical, it's not just a learning transmission, but almost like this physical transmission yeah. of the energy. Knowledge. Yeah, it's, uh, we call it parampara mm -hmm. in Sanskrit, mm -hmm. it literally is a guru to student. And yeah, it's not just you sitting in a teacher saying X, Y, and Z, like in a classroom, it's everything. It's being around that teacher and picking up their, through osmosis, their energy. It's um, for Ashtanga, it's feeling the physical adjustment over and over and over again from the master teacher that you then inherit into your DNA. And it really is. I think that's one of the biggest differences between some like more, we'll say more matrix, more matrixy jobs and energy healing is that you really have to embody within your DNA, the ability to carry this, you know, and, and you don't become a master teacher overnight. That takes many years, many years. I don't think we're ever done learning anyway. That's just my opinion. We're never done um, perfecting our, our craft. And, um, and, and it is important. I think that is important too. Cause yes, as I said, Reiki was never my modality. I knew that going into studying it, that I was not going to be doing this like you ladies do it. I just wanted to learn because knowledge is power. And so I want to say that to people too. There are so many, there's a wide variety of modalities and you don't have to do them all. What do they say? What's that joke? Jack of all trade, master of none. Mm -hmm. Find the one that works for you, yes. you know, and, and that is your calling. And I know, like I said, I've had healing from both Cindy and Mary both excellent and super effective, but they do them differently because they've, they've embodied it within their own experience. Again, uh, Cindy, with your Peruvian lineage that comes out as well with your healings, um, you know, and so, and so it's, it's powerful because then you've stepped into your own. And I will say the dangerous thing about the internet too, is you don't know what's real and what's not sometimes. And that's what I was going to say. Absolutely. As a be careful because there are a lot of people out there who have a tendency to say, I can teach you. And they just actually take your money and go, because I've had that happen to me. Thankfully it didn't cost me an arm and a leg, but you know, it happened. And, you know, and just what Cindy was saying too, there's so much out there and that you can learn. And that's why I'm here because I still want to keep learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can do the matrix scene like you, with the, with the Reiki, I combine the two, but I want, I know there's more. I'm not specialized in demon removal. I don't know if that's my gift, <laughs> but I can do, you know, the healing part. I can see like, 
okay. I ask open-ended questions. Now, if she had a stomach, what's in her stomach that's making her sick? And sometimes they'll show me the oddest looking things like ever, but it's a, it's a physical, it's like a metaphor of remove this item, put it in the vital flame of St. Germain and send her healing. And that's what I do. That kind of removal. So it's not like a demonic device removal. I don't know how to, I'm not sure on that, but if that's my calling, I will do it, but I, I'm going to get trained first. I'm not jumping into that. <laughs> so. Well, and let's talk, I like how you said that too. I want to, I want to stop pause on this for a second, because I don't know if our audience picked up on what you just said. That was so important. So like when you're healing, even, and I know this as a teacher as well as a yoga teacher, you're really just the conduit. Yes. Cause I don't know if you guys heard what she said. They, they show me, they tell me. Yes. There's some, mm -hmm. there's another, and that's that entity of understanding entities is that you're, you have an ability to see, but you're, I know, cause I know you call in Michael, you, cause you call in your higher selves. Like you, you call to, to show you where there needs to be work done on the person. Exactly. And, um, and so, and I know, and before we hit play or record play, listen to me, I sound like I'm 1996 again, hit play. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, Cindy, you were, we were, we've talked about this before about, we talked, I mean, I always laugh with Cindy. If you ever come to my class on Sundays in Marietta with Cindy, usually afterwards, we have the gnarliest conversations and I love them because <laughs> we talk about oh, yeah. aliens. We talk about all sorts of stuff. If some random person would have walked in off the street, they'd probably think, what cult is that? But no, it's so fun. <laughs> but uh, we talked a lot about entities and entity attachments, Cindy, because that's something you do do. And um, can we, because yeah, on Sunday we were talking about, you know, we have demonic, the literal demons. Then you have like poltergeist, then you have earthbound entities. Can we talk about just briefly the differences, like what the different categories are of, of attachments? Yeah, probably the some of one of the more common are uh, just what we call earthbound. In other words, they're they're disembodied spirits. They're probably human at some point, but they didn't cross over. For whatever reason, they're still working out some stuff, so they haven't crossed over into the light yet. And if they happen to find somebody or notice somebody who um, their energy is low or and, and sometimes they'll even have good intentions, you know, they'll see, uh, you know, a, a real, you know, real embodied person. Their energy is really low, especially children. And they're um, uh, maybe even not necessarily that they're saying out loud, but maybe they feel very lonely and the the entity can sense that there's loneliness so they come in to help but when they come in to help they're also bringing in whatever issues of them not being able to cross over to that person do you see what i mean mm -hmm. yep and then the, um they get comfortable with each other even though the person might not know that they have this earthbound presence with them, uh, once you start to get into the work and you, you actually start having conversations with the entity and even the conversation with the person, and then they realize at what point that the entity was invited into their space and that that entity had been providing comfort to that person without even knowing it. And so that creates almost like this, this attachment. And so part of that work is simply them realizing, oh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the entity itself, oh, I didn't mean to be hurting this person. I was just trying to help, right? Sending that entity in the light. But what's uh, most important is for, for the person who is in body is uh, helping them re-empower themselves helping them with whatever traumatic stuff that they have going on that kept that thing attached to them in the first place. If you go there, if you start with that root, then nothing else can, can attach. Right. And what happens, um, like when I do things, and, and it's not necessarily um, – you know, a person doesn't always come to me and say, oh, I've got attachments and I've got this and this going on. They come in, they come to me probably that like how they come to you, Mary. So I mean, I just have issues. I don't feel good. I feel stuck. Yep. You know, I feel this is going on. They, they come because they're, they're just having symptoms. They've gone to the doctor. The doctor can't help them. And they come to me as a last resort. 
(laughs) (laughs) And so then in the process of just going in there and figuring out, then you see their issues, like their own trauma. And then you can see where something might have come in and attached because of their issue. So an uh, entity doesn't just can't just attach itself to you if you are fully in your higher self. Do you see right. what I mean? Yeah. And it, anything, it can only attach if um, if you're experiencing some kind of vulnerability. Your everything was down, or your um, you know your auric field was down. That is when they usually come in. Uh But you work with the individual, at least this is the way I do it. This is the way that you work with the individual first. Then it's much easier if there's something on there attached, then that can release much easier and it can go. Do you see what I mean? But and, and then that goes So you're talking about the different kind of entities like the earthbound. Those are the probably the most common ones. There are um, implants like someone can like actually get like implants in them, like little things that are keeping their, and the implants can come from um, other being like alien type other beings and uh, light workers are uh, prone to implants because it's a matter of trying to keep them dim. Like there are curses. Curses are interesting when you see them on people. I don't know if you've ever seen curses, Mary, or a time or two. They just show up really, you're talking about things showing up weird. Yes, I think I've seen it because I've had people where I don't understand what this is. I'm like, what in the heck am I? And my guides are saying, go in there, wrap yourself in the armor of God, and you got to remove it. I went, okay, okay. So I'm Mm -hmm. trusting them to have my back. And yeah, I, Cindy, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen some weird stuff. Now that makes sense. And they're they're entity like, yeah. Because I don't know, like they're entity like, but they just have they're either like black or tarish or have these tentacly things on them. And Thank you. I don't know. I had it in my head. Yeah, I was like black blob, right? like goo. You know? Yes, like kind of like goo, like tar. That gives me the goosebumps when you say that because that's exactly what it looks like. That's how I describe it. it looks like tar, and some actually look like octopusy thingies i'm like what the heck is that you know and, and they'll they'll go into like um, oh. some of them are very octopusy looking where it's like suction cups and other ones I are know. like very tentacly where it goes in like thin tentacles and it just goes in and you're having to like try to pull all that out that's what so i call those them are, <laughs> so those are interesting they're i mean i don't know how you describe it mary but they're kind of like entity like but not really there i don't know because they have an energy they have a vibration they have something right. to it but they're not exactly. yeah now are these curses maybe they're one and the same but is it something like if, if someone puts a, a hex or a curse on a person or is it also lineage based where someone inherited a curse oh absolutely oh yeah, yeah poor, poor people it. who inherited that. I had, I had an inherited one on me. Oh. Like uh-huh. big ancestors. <laughs> All right, Cindy, you need to scan me, man. How many do I have? <laughs> <laughs> I have family members yeah. that just dagger me because they, they don't understand what I do. So they just want to attack you. You know what I mean? And I'm just yeah, like, nope. Yeah, yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so there are those. And, and, Again, oftentimes those are what curses look like, but they're not always curses either. They're just, I don't know, things that have somehow managed to, to leach on to a person. Right. Can you curse yourself? You like, can, people curse, huh? can people curse themselves not realizing it? You know, this is a great question. Yes. Because this is what happens when people uh, often say they have entities where it's almost like they created an entity. For themselves. Yes. So just because they believe in it so much, yep. you know, like they they yep. somehow have felt disempowered or you know felt traumatized or they got a lot of shame or self hatred, all those things going going on within them. Yep. That that in itself create like all that can create an energy, and then, and then if they start believing that they have an entity, 
they can like create one based off of their own self-hatred and shame and all that stuff. You, you see what I mean? So, yeah. so if that answers your question, I'm not like cursing, but they can create, I don't know if you've had this experience, but they can create their own entity thing just because they believe in it so much that they believe in that more than they believe in their power to heal themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I see it. It's almost like, it's like sometimes the hard parts of being a human of humaning, um, you know, dealing with abandonment, shame, guilt, all the, 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 the shadow of, of humans. And sometimes I've noticed that, that people who don't want to have to sit in those feelings will try to create an entity to blame it on instead of actually doing the work. And, and, and the thing about it, how dangerous that is too, is because if there is, you know, in yoga, we call it the karmic cause and effect, the work that you agreed to when you came on this planet. So if you've got abandonment issues, which is a big one for a lot of people, instead of actually working on the abandonment, you will say, oh, a, a demon did this. It's not my fault. It's not so-and-so's right. fault. My boyfriend, husband, whatever, didn't abandon me. It was this demon's fault. Well, then that negates the work that you need to do. And what can happen is that abandonment issue is just going to keep happening over and over and over again until you work on it. But then you'll keep feeding into the idea that it's not an issue. It's this thing. It's the projection onto this imaginary friend that you've really created, you know, um, and humans do that. It's escapism. That's just we're humans are really good at doing that. We're really mm -hmm. good at like projecting out of us instead of just actually sitting in our shit and um and working through it realize how powerful we are that we can actually do that that we can create like the shadow belief of an entity and then actually make it happen that's how much of a create how powerful of a creator that we are and and for that it's just a matter of, you know there's has to be a lot of shifting that's why it's always important to just go back and do the internal work instead of just saying oh, we're just gonna get rid of this thing and then leave you alone. Then you're all fine. Yeah. Because it usually doesn't even work that way. Anyways, <laughs> you know, I find it too, that even when you're working within the realm of that, even when you're, you're, you're trying to help someone release an energy, whether it's an entity or whatever, but it's just like this energy, like this heavy, big energy that feels like it's, I mean, they create, it created its own essence, right. Mm -hmm. Um, that the, the real work still had like, okay, so maybe you've softened some of that where it went, you know, kind of gone away, but then the real work still has to happen. The what true created work, it in the first place. Yeah. The true right. work of where did that, like how, let's shift that, all of that creative energy and let's create something good and something beautiful instead of something where you're feeding into your sense of powerlessness. Right. I tell people all the time is when I do healing for them, I said, I get a sense with them. And there are a couple of people I said, I think I said, I can remove this, but you have to also keep it away. I said, because I think a lot of people miss it when you take it out. Do you know what I mean? Like you remove it. Where'd it go? Oh, I, I'm not myself. Oh, I'm down. I'm, you know, and I said, you got to stop that. I said, because what you're thinking, you're putting it back. I said, start exactly. saying, I am powerful. I am strong. I can do this. Start saying, I can heal myself. You have the power. You know, I tell that to the couple people. And I said, you got to take your power back and stand in your own. I can help you with it, but you have to do the work as well. I can't just do it all for you because if you keep wanting it back, it's coming back. And there's nothing I can exactly. do about it. It's exactly. And I've, I've had that. Ex, ex, uh, my visitor. Yeah. My family. <laughs> She's, this, I'm surprised she wasn't here before. <laughs> She's the star. She's Aww. like, camera, where's the camera? Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I would agree with that 100%, Mary. It is. It's not just a matter of saying, okay, I, you know, we got rid of this. Your work is done. It nope. looks like it's done. Yes, because they will miss it. But they don't know. They don't think that they do. They don't realize how much energy that they've been putting into this thing. Right. That when they break that trauma drama, it's like, okay, well then what's, what's left and the owning your power can be so much. Um, it can be frightening. 
when you have to do it. It can scare you like to own just how powerful and beautiful and creative you are. Right. Um, it can be easier to be the victim. Right. Like, and even though you would never really want to be the victim, subconsciously we choose it because we know it, we understand it, we've been believing it for so long, it's just what we know. And then when you have to uh, retrain and reprogram yourself, it's, yep. uh, um, it's, it's, uh, it can be more challenging than, than you think, for sure. Yes, and they feel that void. It's like they feel the void. And they don't know what to do with themselves. So they kind of create that drama back and like, no, 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 no. How about using positive affirmations? Like, okay, put life in your heart, put healing in your heart. See, see, I always tell them, get out in the sun, get out in nature. Mm -hmm. I always tell them, do yoga, walk, whatever you got to do, mm -hmm. because you got to keep yourself empowered and enlightened. And I said, do not allow these negative thoughts any longer. They like, mm -hmm. if that's what's attaching to you, they kind of like that. They feed off of that. So don't give them their food. Exactly. And then, and then just, you know, helping the person that you're working with understand that, okay, can you believe it in yourself more than you believe in this entity? Right. Like, can you be believe it in your capacity to create something, you know, really beautiful? Can you believe that? Can you believe in that more than you believe in this thing that you can't get rid of it? Right. Because that's another thing is that they start to believe, well, I can't get rid of it. I can't get rid of it. It's like, absolutely you can. But yes. you're believing in that so much that it's like, no, instead of believing that you can't, just simply believe that you can do whatever you want. Yes. I have one lady right now that I'm emailing back and forth from, I believe the UK, if she might be Ireland, I'm not sure. I think it's Ireland, actually. I'm sorry wonderful lady but she's so hard on herself and she's always emailing me and so i'm constantly lifting her up i'm like no 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 and she goes i'm sorry i bug you i said you're not bugging me this is my job i said it's called being a person it's called loving someone and caring you know i'm not just gonna sit here oh i heal you goodbye no i'm not healing you first of all your guys and angels right. are looking through me okay let's get that straight second of all this is what god says when you have a heart do unto others right why would i charge anybody i said i don't charge outrageous price i don't believe in that and if you need a healing i'm going to hear for you you can call me you can text me you can email me i do it anyway that's who i am but i i'm trying to empower her to start standing on her own two feet and start doing it herself i said i can talk you to you but you got to start doing the work too let's hit on that because that's where i think yeah. we're heading because that is something that i see all the time in yoga, especially a practice like Ashtanga that's designed intentionally to trigger people. I yes. think a lot of people who are new to the spiritual world and doing the spiritual healing, they have a misunderstanding that when you step into this healing, the spiritual healing, it's going to be rainbows and butterflies and light and love. And that comes way later because when you have to heal, it's hard work. And you can't, you can't like, you can take, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make force him to drink. You know, as I know for me as a teacher, I can, I can say all the philosophy. I can tell you everything about the philosophy. I can talk you through the practice. I can tell you how to pull your stomach in, engage your abundance, but I can't do it for you. Mm -hmm. And with the healing, there's also an aspect of that. I, from my understanding with Reiki and any type of other modalities as well as that you are the conduit, but the person who has the issue is the real spark of life there. And it's like, when you talk about, I see, I mean, we see, I think we've talked about this, Cindy, like, you know, a lot of people, I always laugh. Sometimes people come into a yoga shala. They're not, it's not because they're happy. Like they want to, there's something they want to fix. Like that, it's not that they're unhappy. It's just, they know something is missing. And so they have, are they're intrigued. They want to try this. There's something that they, that's about this, that they, they want. And so, but once shit gets real, once feelings start to come up that are now going to be the resistance needed to create the friction, to create the change, all of a sudden there's a panic because a lot of times people, I talked about this morning with Catherine Edwards and Wendy Smith, a lot of times people, we, and I do this, I'm guilty of this. I'm sure we all are of holding on to old patterns that we don't like because they're familiar because we know them. We know the outcome. There's no surprises. Instead of just letting go, 
moving through it and stepping into this world that we don't know that's unfamiliar. And I think we're so programmed to think, Oh my God, all the things that could go wrong. We're not programmed to think about all the things that could go right. Exactly. And what that liberation is going to give, give you from working through your own stuff. And, um, and so I want to, with that, that idea of working through it, let's, pause on that because if someone comes to either one of you for a healing it's not just one and done is it you don't just stop with the healing and that's it like popping a pill and there you go the magic pill it's done you're free you're liberated you're in you're in bliss now it's not like that is it no it often that opens up which is why um i also offer like more intensives where okay i'm, I'm doing this whole uh, a big package to help because what it will do very often one session can open up Pandora's box because they're they are accelerators. The yeah. energy set the energy set sessions they're catalysts and they're accelerators. And then suddenly you're pushed into it, and then all this energy and then all these emotions get you know pulled up. That then you're like, okay, what do now? Yeah. What am I? So that's it's usually just one session. If you just have like one, it's usually just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, and that's what I tell them. I said I can't carry you. You're mm -hmm. you're gonna have to do the work. But I, and I and some of them, I had one lady today. Oh my goodness! From the moment I I tapped into her, I just started hurting from head to toe. But she's been through so much physical trauma, and I said I know you're gonna need more. I said please don't take this as I'm shoving myself on you, but I said, I truly want to help you because I can feel your pain. And I said, mm -hmm. you definitely need more because you've been through so much in your life and you got to release all this mental, physical, emotional, psychological trauma right now. And I said, and she goes, well, did you see anything attached to me? I said, actually, no, because they only gave me so much to work on you because you have so much. <laughs> I said, I'm afraid if I take you any farther, it's going to be too much for you. So that's what I do. Yeah. And it's interesting that, that you said that because it reminds me too, uh, uh, you know, bringing it a little bit back to the entities is a lot of times the entities, they won't show up on the first session no. because the first session, there's so much of their stuff coming up, going on that it's like you have to go through the layers and it might not be until three or four sessions later where you're like, oh, there's, there's an entity there too, but it's been feeding on all this other stuff that, yeah, so um that happens pretty frequently as well. She's yeah. going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, we gotta hide, we gotta hide, we gotta hide, oh shit, oh shit. Exactly. But they'll do that. They'll, 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 they'll go under. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, it's I did I had this, this image in my head. I was thinking of a conference in India where there's like so many people sitting on the floor, and of course Sharat's there speaking. I'm thinking, I wish we could see like how many other beings are following each person around like how packed that room would really be you know to see like how you know because we can't see it we just feel it we, we, we can't see it um but yeah i i'm so glad we talked about that because guys yes any and that, the same with yoga too like anytime and people have said that in ashtanga as well it's because the ashtanga practice itself is designed again it's designed to piss you off and to force you to like <laughs> deal with your ego and to deal with your own attachments and stuff like that. And, um, which usually come up through the, the patterns of the ego, but somebody said, you know, all these issues, uh, someone I'm paraphrasing what a teacher said once, all these issues that the practice pulls up were issues that you were already going to face in your life to work through. We're just going to put it on, on a hyperdrive, right? We're going to speed it up right now. We're going to pass that. We're going to really just speed yes. it up. And that's, and that's what you've picked. You've picked to speed it up. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so literally you have to keep carrying it on lifetimes. Yeah, exactly. Things can go on lifetimes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Sharad said once in a conference, and I thought this was so fascinating. He said that, um, you practice yoga every seven lifetimes. And that said to me that it took seven different, seven lifetimes for your psyche, your consciousness to process all the work you did in that one lifetime where you were dedicated to the practice that's how much is really happening that sometimes you're not even aware of because it's such a subconscious change uh, going on with you. Um, and so I really want people to understand that whether you're going to Mary or Cindy or coming to my class, you're signing up for, for work to work. Yeah. And all we're really doing is saving you time. That's what I realized at the end. We're just saving you time. That's all. 
Because yeah. eventually, you're, it's going to come out, whether it's now. And, and it just depends on the, the, the kind of quality of life that you want right now. Right. Yeah. You can keep carrying it. It's your choice. You can keep carrying it with you until you die, whatever. Or if you want help now, you know, then that's all we do is just save you some time. It's like right. when you're fed up, fed up enough, that's when you come in. You're like, I just got to do this. Well, I allow, you know, as souls, we're eternal beings. And so God doesn't care how long it takes. You're going to have to do the work at some point. It could take 20 lifetimes mm -hmm. before you finally go enough is enough. It's just going to, it's going to have to be done though. Eventually and you're an eternal soul. So God's like, take as much time as you want. Yeah, it's not going to go exactly. away though, you know, <laughs> until, until you actually yeah. do this work. But, you know, right, if you right. want to piddle around for 20 lifetimes, that's fine. But eventually you're just going to get pissed off enough to be like, all right, let's do this. Let's right. Do this, exactly. You know, um, yeah. so, well, let's talk about the big one, which is the demonic attacks, because I have been um, a victim of this many, many times. And of course, I do have my own abilities where I, I, you know, I don't talk about them that much. I'm starting to talk about them more. Um, and I do know the difference between self-inflicting attacks versus actual entity attacks uh, from from the demonic realm so can we we and a lot and, and cindy we talked about this on sunday this is actually one of the least common isn't it the demonic attacks yeah i mean like the big ones yeah. you can have little implants that are demonic ish you know because uh, um my teacher used to say anything that comes on to you for the pure intention of being malicious or to break you down, he considered that demonic. That was his definition of demonic. Like these earthbound things, they don't they don't come in with the intention of causing harm, but they just cause harm without They're just knowing codependent. It. They're just codependent. It's fine. That's <laughs> what it is. It's just cope a codependent relationship. So right, um, yeah, it's perfect. Um, and but he would call like the, the the demonics any kind anything that was their energy was it was purely nefarious. It was brought to you to to diminish you and to bring you bring you down. And so his definition was just anything that was that, and that could be like small little things too, like even small little implants or um, because because uh, let me see, I was. So, so let me see how I can say this without being weird, but I think we've just we've weird. It's fine. Well, it's it's fine. Just, the weirder the better. The weirder the better. It's fine. <laughs> That's welcome to the Great Awakening. Shit gets weird. So. <laughs> because there can be little entities that are brought in by big ones. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there could be like these big. They're they're more out there. I mean, you know, talking about like the head of things like the yeah. head if it's the head of the reptilians or something like just big and then they have like their little um which call it that they send out to they're, they're, sir, they're minions yeah, yeah they're yeah. minions thank you that's yeah. the word yeah so these, these little minion things those are more common mm -hmm. but that would you know my teacher would consider those demonic as well mm -hmm. you know the little minion type beings those are usually you know pretty fairly easy to, to get rid of as well once you realize where they're coming from and then sending them back to where, where they come from. So there's like that kind of demonic. But then when you're talking about just like a full blown on like, you know, one of the demons from uh, uh, the Solomon's book, you know, the, <laughs> the lesser book of Solomon, like, you know, the from the, the Galatians. The like ones that have names, demons. yeah. The ones that have names, yeah. like those, those are actually extremely hard. You actually have to call them in. Yeah. So those, you don't just get them. I mean, you have to invoke them to come yeah. in, you know? So, you know, like those kinds, those are very, those are actually very difficult to, yeah. to get on you. Yeah. Um, yes. So, yeah. So there's like the, the realms. And then I think what you got, uh, Bri Bryce, from, from my understanding, it was uh, uh, it was like more like a curse kind of a thing that yeah. created like a demonic it was kind the, it of was like like the curse. Little that yeah, it was little minions coming from um, curses yes. from the coven that actually worship Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Conjured up. Um, I've learned way more about Luciferianism than I ever, ever planned mm -hmm. on learning. But, you know, that's. 
So it is. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's it, it, it involved uh, it involves. I don't know if I've shown you, Cindy, the video of Ravi early one morning when there was something in our in the, in the house. I don't know if I showed you that video. I know I sent it to Mary. Um, you know, uh, and I tell people a lot, you know, with with this, it's like there's physical attacks where you actually people have actually seen me get physically attacked by something um, major scratch marks, blood. Uh, yeah bleeding, um, waking up with blood in my mouth for two months straight. Um, I had a tracker in my neck and I remember Cindy, you even saying back in December, you noticed I'd lost a lot of weight. And that was when mm -hmm. this, the, this coven was using my natal chart and harnessing my, and, 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 and according to another friend, this is, um, common and that you do all of a sudden you can't eat because they will usually put something in you. And it was in the back of my neck. And mm -hmm. once it was removed, I was then able immediately to start eating again. Um, and um, uh, some other things have happened that I'm not going to say on on air, but, uh, you know, people have witnessed people in my life have seen, you know, body being lifted up, have seen the actual um, attacks. And uh, the, the video that I, I actually put it on my Twitter with my dog, uh, Ravi, who Cindy has met. It was like five o'clock in the morning. And usually uh, when I'm up that early, I'm usually about to practice. And he usually is snoring on the sofa, which next life, just side note, next life, I want to come back as Robbie. I don't, you know, that's his morning practice is snoring on the sofa. Um, so, and all of a sudden I was getting prepared and all of a sudden he jumped up off of the sofa and the corner, his hair was standing up. He just started barking like crazy, barking, getting in front of me. Of course, I couldn't see anything there, but I could feel something was there. Um, as I told a lot of people, I was way more paranoid because I've dealt with this for so long. It takes a lot to really scare me. It normally just pisses me off at this point. But um, and listen, I, I've laughed about this before. Cindy knows the type of yoga I practice. I've had my legs pulled behind my head so many times in India. You can't break me. You can't, you know, physically break me. It's not going to, you know, uh, it's, it's fine. But uh, Ravi, I, I was so nervous about him waking up the neighbors because it was five o'clock in the morning. That was, that was the thing I was most worried about. But I kept telling it, you have to leave. You have to leave. I don't consent. I could tell when it was getting closer because Ravi would like back up and then charge forward. Um, and of course, I have Florida water. So I don't have any on me right now. Florida water. And so I grabbed the Florida water and I just started throwing it in the corner. And all of a sudden I told, I told Mary, all of a sudden this like awful smell, like sulfate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the video, I'm like, Oh, gross. Like just came up and Ravi all of a sudden relaxed. So I could tell it had left because all of a sudden Ravi was relaxed again, but there's all these telltale signs when it's an actual assault on you, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to have signs of it. It's, it's, um, you know, if you just think something's watching you or you just kind of feel a presence, that's probably different than something that's been sent to literally um, annihilate you because demons, they're cocky. And if they're mm -hmm. working for Beelzebub, they want to have a good report when they come back to show what they've done. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. going to leave without you knowing that they're there. So, um, and so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, but you know, those who, and you said this Cindy to me a lot, and I really appreciate this because I know it's true that when people do participate in like black magics, every time you do any type of magic, whether it's light or black, it has to go through you first. And so a lot mm -hmm. of people who participate in black magic, it wears and tears on their body. You start to see it on them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, one other thing I will add as far as like how things can get on you uh, is if you mess with a, uh, an item that has been like maybe part of a ritual, a voodoo ritual or something very specific. And because uh, this is, I mean, I've, I've had this, not, not me personally, but, you know, I've worked with someone who couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. But, you know, you, like if you, there's an item and you, I, I don't know, first thing, if you see anything in the woods that looks ritualistic or, or even I always tell this to be like, even if you see a rock, you know, even if it just looks like a beautiful rock, ask it if it's okay to come home with you before you just bring it home and do whatever with it, right? Right. Um, so anyways, uh, uh, this, she had uh, brought it home 
And because it was like this curious looking, you know, and she thought it was like, oh, this is a cool thing. It was, it was like meant for me, that kind of a thing. Put it on, put it on the altar of, of anything. So she puts it, you know, puts it on her place of worship. It's like a Stephen King novel. <laughs> and, it, and it caused something, whatever ritual was being performed there, whatever uh, entity that they were calling up. Mm-hmm. From that, it got on her. Oh, gosh. So that can happen. You, so you can uh, get stuff by picking up things that have been part of rituals or ceremonies or, um, you know, that just have that, that energy in it. So watch the things that you bring home. That's why I will never go antique shopping because, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> There's people, <laughs> well, bring, people actually bring home other people's clothing. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I never bring home antiques or anything. If I don't like the vibe, I'm gone. I won't. Sorry, touch I was it. thinking the same thing. My mother. So most of the furniture she had was inherited through the family, but I had this like vanity in my bedroom when I was a little girl. And for those who don't know what vanity is, it's like the mirror with the little desk or the little for makeup and jewelry. And I was little and it sat kind of catty corner in my bedroom. And my mother was very house proud. That's a very Southern thing. So like we couldn't hang posters in our bedroom. You know, it was, she had paintings and it was all antique. I would literally lay there in my bed at night with the covers over my head because I did not want to look in the mirror of that vanity because I was sure I was going to see something in it. Even as a little kid, I was like, no, 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 no. I was like so (laughs) out by that. So I get that. I totally get that. (laughs) Well, my friend, I'm sorry. Mirrors too are portals. I my mean, friend has one that's haunted. So yeah, she covers it, and it's in her spare room. <laughs> yes. Wow, I don't. Yeah. I don't have mirrors in the bedroom for that reason. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. Either. Listen, <laughs> listen. Cindy knows down here in the south, everything's freaking haunted. So I take that shit <laughs> seriously. So. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't need no codependency we don't, we don't need any like you need to go in the light it's fine just go into the light you don't want to live in a mirror for the rest of your life and i definitely don't want you in my bedroom with me so um so yeah yeah for sure so with people who are dealing with like myself like i know for me i know what i've been doing and it's been working and it's been great because i've had experience in this but if somebody for both you ladies if somebody thinks that there is an issue with an entity or a demon or whatever what would their, what, what does a healing session look like if that is the case? Like, let's say it's a demon. Let's say, cause we talked about the entity removal and it's working on the person, but if it's an actual demon that's been summoned and is following or the person picked it up, not knowingly, what does that type of healing look like in order to cut those, those cords that are attached to that? Cindy, I don't know. I, I haven't had that yet. So I don't know if you have, thankfully I haven't had that yet. But, you know, when it gets to, to that point is it's usually a convert for me because this is the way that I was taught how to do it. You I it, it's I have a conversation with the demon. We're we're in conversation. And this is where I also get to find out more there. And and this is where, um, too, they can be very manipulative when you talk to them and they can pretend to be of the light. They'll, they'll tell you whatever they need to tell you so that you'll, you'll leave them alone. Yeah. But it's usually, and, but uh, it's also the conversation is had through the person. So the person that has the entity, they are the ones, it's their voice. So it's their body because it's on them. Their chan, it's almost like they're kind of channeling yeah the yeah. the, inform- the the voice of the entity and then the person then who's uh who has it attached they're participating in it as well right. and so it's usually just a conversation um and then it there's a lot of like dialect trying like convincing and then there's the person which is a, so a really important part of it. The person who it's on, they have to really step in and help to push it. Cause I don't pull it out by myself. They have to, because if it got on them, there was some kind of invitation of some form, right. even yeah. if it was a subconscious invitation, even if they didn't mean to, like I said, even if they were vulnerable, 
Yeah. Right. And yeah. they have to break, you know, like you have to go through the process of them. If there's contracts, they have to break the contracts. You know, they have to, I mean, it, it, it actually just really depends on, I wouldn't say there's like a one size fits all way of doing it. Cause it very much depends on the entity. It yeah. depends on the person. And it's just like this dialogue. And then yes, there's a lot of art, like Archangel Michael, the the warrior spirits of light i mean you're not i'm not like in this even the magdalene you know there's a lot of um because you know how we talked about how the magdalene there they they that's part of what they did too as priestesses they could get rid of demons so it's like you have all of these um things that are working uh you know like the sacred beings the true yeah. the true beings of light who are there as well Yes. And uh, eventually, at the end, it's the person becoming strong enough yep. to finally push it off. And then you're just helping them pull it out. Pull back up. And the archangels right. and everything, you're oh. just helping them pull it out and just sending it, sending it into the light. But that person has got to also yes. push it off. So let's yeah. pause on that for a second. I want to make that clear. If, if, if a demon is being removed, the person who has the demon is the one that's actually doing the bulk of the removing. Yeah. If that person, the contract, yes. yeah, if that person isn't involved, the demon is not going to go anywhere because they're that's that you're the one, you're the contracted one. Um, and that's yeah. what I did months ago. I did one with uh, Shanti in South Africa, and she actually had me go and speak under like hypnosis, go and speak to this demon and ask it what it wanted. I had to communicate with it in order to help mm -hmm. push it away. Um, and so I totally get that. And so I want people to understand that like Cindy, Mary, anybody that's a light worker is not the person removing the demon. They're just there as a spotter. They're yes. back up. Yeah. They're the backup. I'm spotter. glad Cindy said that though, Bryce. I'm glad Cindy said the Magdalene and, and Michael and I call on Yasha because I call all three of them with every healing I do. And there are times mm -hmm. I have to have them come in and remove things. And maybe I haven't been shown that it's a, a, a demon attached to somebody, but I've actually had to have them come in and help me remove stuff that I know I couldn't physically. I can't. You said or go right past. You I know. I see that all the time. I keep doing that. I'm thinking what's in front of me, <laughs> but oh, this is Michael going, Hey girl. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have, I call him all the time. I call all three of them. And so I'm so glad you said that Cindy about Mary Magdalene. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that makes so sense. Why I call her because yeah. they're such a, and, and I'll in mother Mary, I call, everybody. Yes. I need help. I need help. And there's, I've had a couple of people where I had to have their help me literally help me move, remove stuff. Mm -hmm. so, but I didn't see like the demon. I didn't have a conversation with it, but I know I'm going to get training on that. Now you say that I keep hearing the downloads. You got to do this. I'm like, Oh geez, here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's scary. Yeah. I mean, well, for me, when Shanti put me under and I had to go talk to the demon, it's a little bit frightening to go yeah. and look, but that, but that, but that in itself, is part of getting your power back yep. is actually standing mm -hmm. up to it. And the weirdest yes. thing happened when I actually walked up and like looked at it, it kind of shrunk. Like it was actually freaked out that I was like WTF. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. They don't, they don't like to be seen. Yeah. They prefer to go back and, and they'll get mad at you when you keep calling them up. Cause they're like, leave me. One of the first things that they'll say to you when you're trying to talk to them is they'll say, leave me alone. It's like, leave me alone. And this yeah. is where you need the help, Mary. Right. It's yeah. like, then you gotta, cause it's like, nah, we ain't, we ain't leaving you alone now. <laughs> you know, but Wait, that's listen, you haven't left me alone. Stop. So I'm not gonna leave you alone. Stop. Right? Leave me alone. Stop. Leave me alone. I don't want to go anywhere. It, there's like a very stubborn feeling to, to right. them. Right. And see, and then because I know I've been a warrior multiple lifetimes, I know I've been a female warrior, let's put it that way. So it resonates with me, Cindy, that you say that they're not going anywhere. I'm not giving up because I'm not a quitter. I'm, I'm a fighter. I will, I will, I will help somebody to be free. Hands down, mm -hmm. hands down. So I don't care if it takes me all day. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, so that, and it can take more than one well, you know, and this is where we get back to, okay, is it something that they created themselves? Is it a real, is it a real presence? Like how, how long it actually takes for them to feel if they were, even if it, if, you know, if it was a true demonic thing, did they have some kind of attachment to it? 
Are they? Yeah. So it can yeah. take more than just one session to recover because then it's a matter of then you have to like help them reprogram their whole body. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I will say like for the last four months, this has been like a battlefield for me um, because I know, I know where mine's coming from. I know exactly where mine's coming from and it's a coven mm -hmm. and they keep doing more and more spell work and it keeps get. but, but I actually feel like over the last four months, I actually am getting healthier because the more it happens, the more I now know how to push back. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's so much about the person that's experiencing this. You are, mm -hmm. you are, whether you want to be it or not, you're the star, the person that's getting attacked, yeah. you're the star of the show. And so you can't yeah. come in and get someone else to do it for you. But isn't that, isn't that just true in any type of spiritual realm? No one's going to do it for you. They're just right. your backup dancers. Mm -hmm. You got to do it yourself. Right. And, yeah. um, and I, I, I'm just here to help. Yeah. To, to, to guide. We're just guides, guides to give you more information, you know, yeah. and we were chosen to be that conduit. They choose us because they knew we could do it. And there are times you, you think I really can. Yeah, you can. You know, my guys will tell me that all the time. Like I told Bryce, they literally had to kick my ass in the shower. <laughs> you know? Get yourself out there. And I'm like, oh, geez, here we go. <laughs> you know? Let's let's focus I on that doubt, it. too, because Cindy yeah. mentioned that in the beginning about okay. the doubt that that creeps in. So let's let's end on that, because I know a lot of people experience self-doubt. And as I said before, we hit record, you know, crazy people don't think they're crazy. <laughs> if you think you're crazy, you're probably not. <laughs> I think I'm crazy all the time. <laughs> I, know, to say. I wake up, yeah, every well, you know, it's pretty normal for me to wake up and be like, damn, am I just crazy? <laughs> but then sometimes, but sometimes like this wind of self-doubt will come through with that. And um, and I think it's very common for you. So if if you're watching this and, and you're a healer, especially this kind of healer that's that deals with things that are just on the fringe and strange, and um, it it might not make sense. You know, it might not make medical sense. It might not make rational sense because I'm actually a very rational person. I mean, I studied. Um, you know, I went to college. I was a biology major. I mean, I love all that is medicine and science. Yeah. And so, like, that part of me very much exists. And so I think that part of me very often comes in and says, girl, you just nothing. Are you just making this stuff up? And then the self-doubt comes in, too, of what, you know, can I do or should I? Or, and am I really doing anything? Am I actually really helping people? Am I, you know, am I just making all this up? I mean, it's it that comes through, I think, more frequently. And and this is after years, you know, and like you'll you'll go through it when you first start. Of course, you get like the whole imposter syndrome. Yeah. But 20 years later, it still shows up. It'll just come out of nowhere, like this thing, this doubt. So it's like it's just almost like this wind that comes through and just fills you with that same idea again. You're like, oh my gosh, I thought I've already dealt with this. But that's the interesting thing about I think just healing in general, being human. It's so we're we're always on this spiraling path, and so the things that you thought you've dealt with, they'll just they'll come back, and you're like, oh, there it is again. There's that doubt again, like just you know, lacking confidence of yourself and your abilities and i think that's just part the part of being human part of the process yeah it's i think it's a healthy part actually of almost too much doubt is a bad thing but i think when that doubt creeps in it does help us to keep ourselves in check with our own ego with our own um reasons for doing this and and um so mm -hmm. when that doubt creeps in what do you do to reground yourself i just talk to my guides and angels i just say no i was chosen for this I can do this, you know, if I meant to do more of the demon removal, even though I doubted myself, but deep down in my, in myself here in my heart chakra, I know I can do it, but I'm getting the training. I'm not doing it on a whim. There's no way. Mm -hmm. So when that doubt comes in, I just say, nope, not mine, gone. I know I can do it. That's exactly what I do. Mm hmm For me, it depends, you know, it depends on what is kind of what it's bringing up for me. If like, if it's like a true, like a wound, that's yeah. resurfacing and then how I have to talk to myself again through that is this like the is this the inner child that's coming back again or is this like you know what, what what's actually what's the deeper thing that's that's going on here 
And, um, but that's part of what I do through my work too. So I think that I, uh, that's why I do it to myself is, you know, the shadow work, which yeah. I do with the energy is like helping people with the inner child and those voices and all that. Well, I still have one too. Yeah. You know, mine, mine are still there. So I, you know, for me, it's just a matter of looking at what still needs healing there. A little, a little tender, loving care. I mean, that's, that's important. Yes. Even though we move through, I mean, we see this in the Ashtanga practice all the time, because as Cindy knows, there's six different series. And so you'll go through a primary series, which takes a while to get through years to get through sometimes. And you'll work through all the stuff that comes up as your body starts to open and create new patterns, stuff obviously surfaces. And you think you've worked through a lot of stuff. And then you start second series, which is the Bash It Crazy series. And that's when all that stuff will come back up again, but like magnified. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's, that's just part of being human, you know, and understanding that these wounds are always going to kind of be little soft spots in you. But part of that power is understanding what that is, you know, and not living in that womb when you can spot it for what it is. And then there's power there. There's a sense of like, not necessarily controlling it, but like understanding it for what it is. And, um, and that, I think that in itself is part of taking your power back in your healing. When you have that liberation, um, I know Sri Swami Satyajananda talks about that is separating, knowing, okay, my body is feeling this right now. And when you can say it that way, you can start to observe it and look at it, except for like totally identifying with it to the point where you're projecting stuff out and then calling things in unintentionally, you know? Um, and that's part of the process. I mean, we're, we're ever, I mean, even after we finish this life, we're still going to go to another planet and have to do it all over again. <laughs> more stuff. And then I find usually on the other side of that, that there's usually an up leveling that'll happen. Yeah, I was going to say that. So too. There's yeah. something that happens and it just brings you down, yeah. you know, but then you, you assess like, okay, what is, what is this? What is this really about? Or is this also me just sabotaging? Because I have a tendency to do that. Like I will feel some, create something because I want to stop myself, like for whatever reason, uh, more growth is, I feel like it's too much for me or I don't know, but there's, you know, oftentimes when something comes out, um, uh, there's uh, on the other side of it, there's an up-leveling growth. And I met the part of me that's resisting it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that doesn't, that's, that just kind of wants to stay within this nice little cushy. <laughs> but I know. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Even with the, even, I know that we're talking about the subtle body, the energetic body, but even with the physical body, I tell students all this to all the, to the gross body. Usually when a student is like, all of a sudden they're trotting along their pra their practice and all of a sudden they get really tight and clumsy and they feel like they've taken like five steps back. I'm usually like, just wait a couple of weeks, you're going to bust through. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, it's right before they busted through. And all of a sudden, flexibility has increased, strength has increased. It's funny, but it's kind of like, I heard somebody describe it like, um, a, um, what's this slingshot that I was like, David and Goliath, what's this thing? Um, Pictionary here. What are we doing? Um, where you have to, sometimes you have to pull back into the darkness before it releases and you spring further into the light. And so you just kind of feel that coming, right? Um, I heard somebody explain it once here in the United States where we drive on the right side of the road. If you're going to make a turn left, you have to stop first before you change direction. You know, it's that pause mm -hmm. because something's about to change. And so I'm mm -hmm. glad you brought that up. I was thinking, actually, I was thinking about the tarot cards, like the hangman. Sometimes yeah. you'll see that in people's reads and the next card next to it is like the three of cups where it's in celebration. So it's like telling mm -hmm. you you're in this pause right now you know, and things can surface do a little spring cleaning and then boom. Oh, I know I'm yeah. going through that right now, Bryce. So I know exactly what you two are both talking about. <laughs> it never ends. It never no. ends. I've, I've been feeling it too. That's why I kind of brought it up because it's, it's real. It and is. It's true when it happens. I mean, it happens. And I, I think especially when you get, when you're doing the, the healing work, whether it's, you know, teaching yoga or the that passes through you. So it's, it's got to, it works through you first. Yeah. So all the stuff that you're channeling, it's like going through you and, and, and it's going to work your body and it's going to work your traumas and it's going to work all your insecurities. It's yeah. going to do that 
just as much as going to do the other person because you're you're the the conduit that it's happening through and so <clears throat> you're always I, you know i always feel like i'm in process yes i like, get that you know like it, i'll feel good for a little and then suddenly i'm like oh what is this what is this thing that's this feeling that's creeping in you know tidal wave starts to come up yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, you know, it's it that, yeah. And that's why, I mean, on a daily basis, that's why a lot of Ashtanga teachers get up at two o'clock in the morning to practice before they teach because they want to work through themselves before handling somebody else's energy. Listen, I don't, I practice, well, I don't teach my sore anymore, but I didn't do that. I did that a couple of times and I was like, not for me. I did it afterwards, but, uh, but, um, you know, that, that is why that's the, that, that's the purpose behind that is to work through yourself because you're about to take on other people's energy. And so right. you've got to like stabilize yourself first. So, all right, ladies, we're at like over an hour now and I don't want to keep you guys too long. So now you're both super, super busy, but I'm going to put down in the description box of, as always, both Cindy and Mary's contacts. Of course, Cindy has her YouTube channel, Sacred Garden Yoga, where she has so many fascinating uh, discussions and topics on different uh uh, d different little subjects regarding the big subject of healing so if that's something and you're new to the spiritual world i would totally suggest going over to her channel so you can listen to all these conversations so you knowledge is power right i mean ignorance mm -hmm. is bliss but knowledge is power yes <laughs> and <laughs> i mean but ignorance didn't get us that far we were just blissed out but you know so so the more you can learn that the more you'll have a better understanding for yourself of your journey that you're now embarking on so um and of course mary i will be putting your email address down below uh if people want to contact you for healing as well and um and yeah and for everybody listening like let us know if you have any more questions and i've said this to cindy before i think i've said this to you cindy before you know for the three of us we've been in this world for a very long time and so sometimes I know I forget sometimes that there are things in the spiritual realm of healing that I just assume people know, but they might not know. And right. that's just my bad, you know, and I think that's common when people are just used to talking about things used to being in this world, that they take advantage of the fact that there might be some stuff that you just assume people know. So if there are things that you want us to elaborate on more um, that you're maybe confused about, just leave that down in the comment section below and we can do a follow-up and answer your questions and try to help you guys gain some clarity on your own journey. So yeah. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. No, that's why we're at. You yeah. know, you don't have to do it alone. It's much easier. I mean, you can try to do it alone and you're more than welcome to do it alone. There's a lot of people, but I find that just having people, it's it's so much it's so much easier yes, yeah it is. and we've actually at sacred garden we've got a few students coming in now from the esoteric atlanta community that are now coming in and participating yeah, in all of this it. stuff so classes yeah too, yeah i know i'm always i'm always i'm always like oh no when they come because my class is like kind of the mean class <laughs> <laughs> i'm always like sorry <laughs> get on your mat no <laughs> <laughs> so anyway all right guys well thank you ladies both so 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 much and thank you guys all for watching we love each and every one of you and um you know this shit is hard sometimes but as rom Doss, the beautiful rom Doss, used to say as i always say we're all just walking each other home we're all in this together no one gets out of this world alive we're all just walking each other home so so just know that you're not you literally aren't alone every but we're all with you in this so all right ladies i'll talk to you both soon Bye, guys. Bye.